A happy Rex Manning Day to you all. I am reasonably British. Do you have one of these that plays these and outputs through one of these and you want to get this onto that? Well, I feel your pain. If you ask the Google, it seems to recommend this. So I bought this and I bought that and these I sent back. Today we're going to compare this and that to see what is good and what is crap. Oh, by the way, hello subscribers, hello! Kuchiku subscribers, aren't you just the cutest subscribers? Don't think I don't see you there, even though I explicitly told you not to subscribe. Oh, not to worry, in time you will come to rue your disobedience. On to today's topic. If you'd like to digitize or capture, as the youth say, analog video like VHS or an old gaming console, there are a few options the internet likes to repeatedly throw at you. By far the most prominent is this, the Elgato Video Capture. The first result when you search on the Bezos box is this clear click blue thing, followed shortly by the Elgato. Then you see this endless sea of 10 to $30 Chinese no-name capture dongles. I know you're saying, what do you mean dollars? Aren't you supposed to be British? And to that I say, you keep your dirty little mouth shut. Um, oh yes, capture cards. Well, I kept Googling and Googling. I even did the Bing once or twice and eventually I stumbled on this, the Blackmagic Intensity Pro 4K. Oh, finally, a brand that I know and respect. Sweet relief. Blackmagic design will treat me right. Right? They will, won't they? So let us first take a look at some test patterns and let's try to test the best case scenario in terms of quality. Since the Intensity Pro 4K is professional and it's the only one of these that does backwards capture, also known as output, I'll use it to play the test video. This is the original video, which is 720 by 486 interlaced, and this is the same video captured via S-Video into the Elgato. This is playing from the Blackmagic out via S-Video and right back into the Blackmagic again. The first thing you'll notice is that the Elgato cuts off a bit of the edges. The video it gives you is 640 by 480, which seems to be the rule rather than the exception. The Blackmagic only captures NTSC video at 720 by 486 and will only play NTSC video if it is 720 by 486 or 480 and it must already be interlaced or else it mocks you. To my eyes, the Elgato looks okay, but it's noticeably not as sharp, especially in areas of high detail and contrast. Given its very simplistic software and mediocre video quality, it seems like the kind of capture card your dad would get very excited to tell you about. This is a Puss OK USB capture card, and it is among the finest $15 to $30 Chinese capture cards you can have on your doorstep tomorrow, courtesy of the Bezos. And the video quality is, ah, God, that's horrible. The crop is off-center, it's noisy, the colors are oversaturated, the de-interlacing sucks and the audio, oh, it's horrific. First of all, it's mono, even though there's a left and right input, and I'm pretty sure they just soldered the left and right channels together, because it's about twice as loud as it should be. The audio is so distorted and noisy, I won't subject you to it, but at least not yet. There is nothing usable or redeeming about this thing. The only thing it does effectively is disappoint. It must be destroyed and I must destroy it. And this is the ClearClick Video 2 USB. Aha, that's very clever. I have higher hopes for this one. The packaging is excellent. The case is all aluminum and it is very light but feels sturdy. And the video is, ah, really? But you were doing so well. That is cropped in something fierce and the colors are washed out and yellowish. It looks as if there was a very tiny man smoking cigarettes for a long time in that blue box. Ah well, let's compare it to the Elgato. My my, the clear click really is poop. I mean it's certainly not as bad as that $15 pox on humanity, but it is not worth $60 when you could get the Elgato for $30 more. I must confess that I feel Disappointed! This 
is the Retro Tink 2X Pro, which is a line doubler or HDMI upscaler made for gaming consoles. It converts analog video to HDMI and then you plug that into a modern TV or an HDMI capture device. Keep in mind, what I'm using it for today is not what it was built for. Gaming consoles and VCRs might have both been made to play on tube TVs, but they each have their own unique quirks, and I wouldn't expect the Retro Tink to work perfectly. And it looks bloody amazing. It looks so good. At first, I didn't believe that the black magic wasn't just feeding the signal back into itself digitally, so I unplugged the chroma cable and... I am seriously impressed. The video is being output via S-Video from the Blackmagic into the RetroTINK and back into the Blackmagic via HDMI. Now let's compare the RetroTINK with the Blackmagic playing back into itself via S-Video. Now that looks damn close, but I think the RetroTINK has better definition on the horizontal axis. You do lose maybe one or two lines at the top and bottom of the frame, but the crop is still way less than the Elgato. Tinky the Rabbit, you have chosen your analog to digital converters wisely. I now dub you Sir or Lady Tinky the Rabbit. Long may they reign. Okay, that's enough of my hack job test patterns. Let us now play some actual video. I'll also play some music so you know what each of them sounds like. <laughs> Now, so far you might be thinking that I'm going to recommend the Retro Tink or the Black Magic for your analog capture needs, but either of those recommendations would come with big f***ing asterisks. On my analog capture journey, I found myself thwarted by incompetence at nearly every turn. The one exception would probably be the Retro Tink. Everything it claims to do, it does exceptionally. If you want to capture retro games, Tinky the Rabbit will treat you well. But for VHS, I can't recommend the Retro Tink or the Black Magic without using excessive amounts of profanity. So there's no need to watch the rest of this video. If you're capturing VHS and you're not too anal about quality, you should just buy the Elgato. And if you're a retro gamer, go watch My Life in Gaming or Retro RGB. They are way smarter than I. So that's it. That's the end of the video. Go away now because the rest of this is just me slowly losing my mind. Black magic. Oh, oh, black magic. What happened? We used to be friends. Was it something I said? How can you make something so great and then something so, so fucking motherfucker? What the f were you thinking? William Shatner would fucking scream if he actually could eat any more fucking spaghetti. Poop f monkey. I don't fucking yodel when you f do I? But let me explain. I was excited to receive my Intensity Pro 4K. Sure, I mostly use a Mac laptop, and this was a PCI card, so I had to install it on my Linux tower. I would have preferred USB-C, but Blackmagic had discontinued the Intensity Shuttle for some reason. The IP4K had gotten some less than favorable reviews, but I know Blackmagic. I was pretty confident that the capture quality of the Intensity Pro 4K would be hard to beat, and it is. The user experience, however, was like being a Guns N' Roses fan after 1993. You want to like it, but it keeps letting you down. First of all, the Intensity Pro 4K doesn't come with a manual. Instead, you're told to scan this QR code, which sends you to... But, but, this is the manual for a different product. Okay, don't panic. I'm sure this manual at least mentions the Intensity Pro 4K. No? What the f 
the black magic. Okay, okay, that's okay. Thankfully, the included S video adapter is color coded. So for input, the blue bit goes into the blue bit and the green bit goes into the green bit. And for output, the blue bit goes into the red bit and the green bit goes into the blue bit. Oh, f off, black magic. I only figured this out because I found this illustration on a forum post, not in the manual you provided, not on your website, not even the included software told me. That forum post is referring to the old Intensity Pro, which actually has a manual. Sorry, it had a manual. That manual is not on your website anymore. A major selling point for me was that the Intensity can also output analog video. To do this, you use the included software, Media Express, and you'd think you could drag and drop a video and Media Express would play it. But alas, that might just be user friendly. If you don't give Media Express exactly what it wants, it will say, your hardware does not support this video format. Really? What formats does my hardware support? Hmm, this seems like something that you would look up in a user manual. Okay, so you won't tell me what formats you want and you won't convert it for me. I know this is supposed to be a professional product, so I don't expect too much hand-holding, but at least give me a useful error message. And don't get me started on its default behavior being to stop the capture if it drops a frame. Drops a frame? I thought this thing was supposed to have a time-base corrector in it, right? Didn't I hear that somewhere? You know, at first I thought I was the problem. I thought maybe I'm just another of the nameless plebeians, another dead pixel in the masses of uncultured swine and muted trumpets quacking gossip to each other so they can... I mean, of course I'm not talking about you, my pretty little subscribers. You are all so clever with slightly above average sexual charisma. No, of course I'm not talking about you. Well, anyways, I used to think I was the problem, but now I know it's not me. At its core, the Intensity Pro 4K is a good product. It was obviously just excreted from a corporate bureaucratic orifice of incompetence. I know that because thanks to the Wayback Machine, we can see that Blackmagic's website used to say it had a professional broadcast grade time base corrector. But for some reason, that's not on their website anymore. For those unfamiliar with time base correctors, this is an analog video signal. And if you shift the picture down and to the right, you see these black lines. Those are the timing pulses. If you're watching something like a VHS tape, those timing pulses can get all wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey. That can make the picture shaky or distorted. A time-based corrector tries to realign the timing signal to make the picture stable again. Some TBCs are better than others, and nobody really makes them anymore. So good ones can go for a lot of money. But if the intensity has a time-based corrector, it is not turned on, because I've seen a fair amount of wibble and wobble in the videos I've captured. Let's take a look at how these capture cards perform when the time base is in need of correction. For this test, I took a magnet to a few parts of a VHS tape and captured it from each card via composite video. When you see the blue screen with play in the corner, that's my VCR failing. Most every other blue, black or color bar screen is the capture card giving up. This test is far from ideal, but in my opinion it shows that the clear click and the puss OK are both terrible. The Elgato had the worst quality error correction, but it also seemed to be the most likely to prefer showing noise over a blank screen. The retro tink fails miserably, but in its defense, gaming consoles shouldn't have any time base errors. The intensity blanked out and flickered so much the footage was, to me, unusable. That doesn't seem like a professional, broadcast-grade time-base corrector. And now watch our protagonist as he raises his head to glare at his enemy. The intensity was the most out of sync. Again, I say f*** off, black magic. Let's take an even closer look. This is the black magic in the nude. Hmm, I'm guessing I'd find an FPGA under that fan, but I'm too lazy to check. That could do some time base correction, but I doubt it. Let us zoom and enhance. This chip, I believe, is the standard definition video decoder. And if you look it up, it says it has adaptive digital line length tracking and blah, blah. Mini TBC functionality? Mini TBC? I'm not sure if that counts as broadcast grade. Oh, excuse me for a minute. Do anything for me, my sweet little love bunny. 
Yes, I'll do it right away, my love. Love you too, honey bun. My apologies. You know, some days I don't know how I get any work done with that woman's incessant ravings. All day she's telling me to do this or do that, constantly nagging me to mow the lawn or take out the rubbish or feed the children or put on some knickers. It drives me bloody mad. One day, oh yes, one day when she sees what I've created, then she'll be the one they're calling mentally unstable. When the end comes, she'll be the one wearing my knickers. That's right. Um, what was I saying? Um, oh, yes, I... OK, I know the cynicism level is pretty high right now, and I don't want to be that guy. I want to be a positive force. I want you to know, Black Magic, I'm only saying these things because I care about you. I'm using Da Vinci Resolve to make this video, and I love it. I don't want to hurt you, Black Magic. I want you to make a better product and then I want to buy it from you. I'll bet you could even fix all these issues with software or firmware updates. Like I said, at its core, the intensity is a good product. The hardware is excellent, it's just everything around the hardware that sucks. You could, you know, publish an actual user manual. You could update Media Express and have it offer to interlace and convert the videos if they're not already in the correct format. As for the time-based corrector, you could actually use the one that's already built into it, or if that one is no good, it looks like you can reprogram whatever's underneath that fan and have it do the time-based correcting. It's not too late to make this a good product. However, if you'll allow me a bit more cynicism, I'm guessing you're not going to do that. Instead, a 20-year-old company with 1,500 employees is getting outclassed by a rabbit. A f***ing rabbit. Sure, some rabbits are cunning, and this one seems to at least have a rudimentary understanding of electrical engineering, but it is just a rabbit. Do you have rabbits in Australia? I mean, okay, I'll talk about the things I like. The capture and output quality is excellent. It's the only capture card that I've tried that actually outputs in 720x486. Most are 640x480, which I understand why. But if I'm trying to preserve an old video, I want to capture the whole frame. Let me choose where to crop it. Another thing I like, the intensity doesn't de-interlace the video for you, which seems rare but is appreciated. I don't want to be stuck with a certain de-interlacing algorithm, and ideally I think it should be something you could toggle on or off. F*** me, this video is getting long. OK, before I go, I think I should reiterate. For the average, everyday common folk digitizing their VHS tapes, the Elgato is probably just fine. Most people aren't even going to be using an S-video connection, let alone a super VHS player. I've spent most of this video picking only the finest of nits. If you're really obsessed with quality, I would grudgingly recommend the Black Magic and enthusiastically recommend anything from the Retro Tink product line, however you may need a great deal of patience and money, and also a time-based corrector. OK, I think my work is done here. I'm off to sell my wares to the next village. I'll be back someday. Until then, remember to brush after every meal and floss before bed. OK, see you later. Oh, and just one other thing. You may also want to try the capture setup suggested by Technology Connections. Either way, his videos on analog video capture are certainly worth watching, and he's just so dreamy. Oh, and I never talked about pixel aspect ratios. You see, NTSC doesn't use square pixels. Well, it's analog, so it doesn't use pixels at all. But if you capture video with the black magic using something like OBS and the video looks all stretchy or squishy, it's because of the pixel aspect. Uh, excuse me. OK, fine. OK, I'll go. I'm going. Sorry.